the Truth the Girls. Hi everyone, Truth the Girls Sonia here. So this is a kind of a follow-up to my other video, which was about hormones. That one was for the ladies, but this one is for everyone. This one is about how to increase your testosterone. Yeah, even for the women too, actually. It plays um, a very important function. There was a very interesting presentation from Tammy Maraglia, who's the author of The Hormone Secret, a book that I'm definitely gonna go and check out of the library, or check out from the library, whatever. So she was talking about testosterone, the role that it plays, and what you can do to increase, improve, balance your testosterone. So for one, she mentioned that in men, well, they can take testosterone supplements, but testosterone thickens the blood. So if you're taking the supplements, you have to do a CBC. Testosterone supplements can increase your testosterone by two to three times. But it's not something women want to do, uh, most women. In women, though, testosterone is a treatment for osteoporosis and for depression. It's important for muscle maintenance and skin elasticity, and it helps your brain and increases your confidence. So what? how can you improve your testosterone? Well, one way that she mentioned was to do the Superman or Superwoman pose for two minutes. Literally, this is so simple that you just stand with your hands on your hips like that for two minutes. So that's one way to raise your hormone levels. It's pretty easy and it's free. Also, she said exercise, even walking, can increase your testosterone and it's good for depression. Okay, so um, you're probably thinking that your testosterone, it's made by your sex hormone producing glands. For women and also for men, this goes down after 40, but even if you're having menopause or andropause, you can still make testosterone because apparently she says your adrenals make testosterone after 45. So it's not hopeless. And to support your adrenal, she recommends supplementing with vitamin C, getting eight to 10 servings of fruits and vegetables a day that you need 700 to 1000 milligrams of vitamin C per day. So if you're not eating all those fruits and vegetables, then you need to supplement. Some other supplements that your adrenals really love is, uh, well, one of them is maca, which increases usable testosterone, testosterone activity. She says that the hormone testosterone binds to something called sex hormone binding globulin carrier protein, whatever that is, and that this attaches to the testosterone. So even if you're producing it or you have it in your body, if it's attached to this binding globulin protein or whatever, it's not usable. But using maca frees it up so that it can actually go around your body and do what it's supposed to do. Also, ashwagandha, this is an herb that is an adrenal adaptogen. Uh, which will boost testosterone production by the adrenal glands. Good to know. Sorry about the noise, it's my rabbit over there. Also, she says that low fat is not good for testosterone. Although some people, uh, some people's livers can't handle so much fat. So uh, maybe it's better to eat more fat sporadically. So if you're one of those people where your liver doesn't handle a lot of fat, well, go and get your blood test done, your liver enzymes, and you'll see if you're, if you're overdoing it. Okay, well, one thing that we all know affects the adrenals is stress. And she says, you know, when it comes to stress, you need to decrease your stress, but de decreasing your stress is um, impossible in some cases. Well, like in my case with a, a child with special needs and like all kinds of stuff going on, it's, it's really impossible to just change the stuff in your life. I mean, let's say if you have a two-year-old or you have, you know, you have six kids or you're a caregiver to, uh, you know, your aging parent or you have whatever stuff going on in your life, it's not always a situation where you can just make that go away because, you know, if that was the case, then wouldn't we all just have no stress in our lives? But that's not how it works, right? So, but the problem is that um, stress creates an inflammatory response in your body and it stops the body from producing hormones. This really resonates with me because, like, I've talked about my issues with adrenal fatigue and uh, menopause and things like that. But I realized that doesn't explain all the problems that I'm having because I've noticed that when, like, for example, when I went on vacation to Cuba, I had no hot flashes whatsoever. I had no, none of the issues that I've had in the past associated with adrenal fatigue or with changing hormones take away all the stress and all of a sudden it seemed like all these problems just went away. So I know that part of it is the natural process of aging and part of it is the stress you're under while that's happening. 
So what is the solution? Because you can't just make the stress disappear. Well, she says that the solution is to turn on the parasympathetic nervous system. So you have your sympathetic nervous system, which is the fight or flight, which for a lot of us is turned on a lot of the time. And that though when you come home and you relax watching TV or something like that, you're not actually turning on the parasympathetic nervous system. You're just kind of in neutral. But if you want to really be able to re rebalance yourself so that you're able to cope with the stress, you have to not only be living with your sympathetic system on or in neutral, you have to turn on the parasympathetic nervous system. So how do you do this? Well, she recommends meditation. And she says that for some people who um, find it hard to meditate, like I myself, uh, I find it boring and it's hard for me to just sit there and just meditate on one thing, whatever. I'm just not a meditator. Um, she says that you can do a guided meditation. You know, for me, when I play piano, I think that I get into a meditative like state, but I find it playing an instrument or also drawing where you kick into the right side of the brain, a very focused meditative activity. But I'm kind of wondering if there's some other things like that you can do also. You got to get your brain into parasympathetic nervous system state because this, uh, this mops up stress hormones. So that's the good news. So this was basically uh, the, the key points that I took note of from her presentation that even if you're going through midlife, it doesn't mean your hormones are all going to shut down because you still have your adrenals and that you can use certain supplements to balance your hormones, that you can also modulate it with diet, and that if you can get a handle on your stress through activating your parasympathetic nervous system, this is going to mop up the stress hormones. So this is all good info that I'm going to try to put into practice. I hope this is useful to you. And again, you, like I'll give you the link. You can go check this out. Check out Tammy Miraglia's book, uh, The Hormone Secret. And uh, thanks for liking and sharing this video. And thanks for listening to me. And I'll see you next time.